I, I think one of the cool re realizations that we found on 4790K was there was an interesting temperature roll off with respect to overclockability. It was fairly distinct. I wouldn't say it was perfectly distinct. But what we found was is that as the junction temperature of the silicon reached, let's say, 80 degrees, 80 degrees C, which is well below where we would normally throttle, right? Normally, we run our parts up to about 100 degrees C junction temperature. And at that point, when it reaches 100 degrees C, we start to throttle the performance back to protect the part. We started to see an overclocking roll-off at 80 degrees C. So we would see parts that were cooler below 80 overclock better until they got to 80. That was a pretty interesting aha moment for us. It gave us the ability to find a smaller population of parts from which to do detailed analysis on. And, and the focus there was to really just do speed path debug, which is something that's, that, that's pretty unique and difficult to do because what you're trying to do is is you're trying to catch the part in a place where it's failing but it hasn't failed so badly that it's lost its mind and you can't extract any interesting information out of it so you want to get it at that point where it's just gonna kind of croak but not totally croak and then once we get it there we can dump out tons of information out of the, the, the processor. We can get gain an understanding of what's in the caches, what's not in the caches, what was the last instruction run, what was the state of that instruction, what was in my buffers, you know, am I stuck waiting on a load, am I stuck waiting on a store. You can get all kinds of interesting state information from these things once you get them to fail in a way that you can capture it. Trying to get the thing to fail but fail in a way that we could control the failure, kind of like a controlled crash. So we spent quite a bit of effort just getting to that point because we've engineered the platform in such a way that when it thinks it's in trouble, it's gonna to try to save itself. And that's a feature. But it's also a feature that kind of hurts us when we're trying to do a controlled crash because platform senses that it's in trouble and it pulls up. In order to debug things, we, we had to like figure out, oh, we gotta tear out our own safety features so that we can crash this thing in such a way that we're not crashing it too hard, but we're, we're crashing it hard enough that we could debug it. And we had to get our own features out of the way that were really out there that you know, are hugely beneficial to overclockers because it allows them to, once they've crashed it, get the system back up and running again. You know, so there was a lot of work from, you know, taking it from this temperature dependency to getting these, these select set of units onto platforms in the debug lab, working with the silicon debug teams and to just understand what part of our silicon is limiting us. And then, then further taking that over to the tester to figure out are there knobs within silicon already that we can use to unlock more of that performance. And you know, I think we found a couple of pretty significant knobs to unlock a good 200 megahertz of performance.